Okay. So yesterday we were talking about uh, it's a continuation of continuity of piecewise functions. Any questions on that? So the whole deal is um, they give you a piecewise function that was like missing something about it, and you had to substitute the number and make sure you get the same thing from both sides. Any questions on those? Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about then is um, sort of some uses of continuity, okay? This idea of continuity. And there are just a couple of special theorems. Uh, special theorems. And they're actually, it sounds a little scary when I say theorems, but um, they're actually, they make perfect, like, logical, intuitive sense. Like, these are things that you know already, um, but there's like special names for them, and you just have to kind of know um, when it applies and how to, and like how to state it. Kind of, okay, so there's two special theorems I wanted to talk about. The first one is called intermediate value theorem. Okay, so I'll state the theorem. It's going to look confusing. There's a lot of notation and stuff like that. But then I'll I'll draw a picture and explain it, and then and you'll be like, oh, God, of course that's true. It's, it's a really obvious thing. Okay, so here's the intermediate value. Theorem. It says if f of x is continuous. On a closed interval, which means the endpoints are included from A to B. Okay, if f of x is continuous, closed inter interval from A to B, and if um, y subscript zero is any y value. between f of a and f of b, then there must be at least one x value. that f of c equals y zero. So I'll give you a second to write that down. It is it looks scary, but it's not at all. Okay. So let me just explain how this works. Um, it's stating you have a continuous function. So we know like intuitively that just means that you can draw it without lifting your pencil, right? There's no asymptotes, there's no holes, there's no jumps, those are the three types of discontinuity. So there's none of that stuff happening between A and B. So let me just draw a picture of such a function. So I have a function that just kind of goes like that, whatever, it could be any random squiggle. Here's A, here's B, okay? So I have a continuous function between A and B, like this part of the function is what I'm looking at really here. All right? And they're saying that, so if this is A, and I know that its y value is f of A, right? This is f of A. And if this is B, then I know that its corresponding y value here is f of B. And it's saying that 
y0 is any y value between these two y values. So like, let's say it's here, y0. Basically what this theorem says is you can't get from here to here without hitting every single y value in between. That makes sense, right? I mean, if I, if I drew this horizontal line, there's no way that you can get from here to here continuously, not lifting your pencil, but somehow miss that green line. It's impossible. There has to be at least one point where the y value is equal to that y value. In this case, it happens to be right here. This is point C. Now, it could be that it hits it more than once. This just says there has to be at least one x value that hits that y value. So that makes sense that it has to be true, right? Like you can't go, if I'm just like dueling, I can't get from here to here continuously without hitting every y value in between, like without crossing this line, right? If the, if the intermediate value theorem didn't work, it would say I could get from here to here without crossing that line. It's impossible. The only way you would be able to get past that without, cro without crossing it is to create a discontinuity. And this is saying that there is no discontinuity. It's continuous. Makes sense, right? That's the intermediate value here. It just states that to get from here to here, you gotta get every y value in between. Okay, any questions on that? So it's important to understand like the anatomy of a theorem like this. There's two parts to it. There's the hypotheses and the conclusion. The hypotheses are the things that have to be true in order for the theorem to actually be valid. So the hypotheses in this case are the function has to be continuous and y0 has to be a point between f of a and f of b. If you remember from last year, this is actually like a, a sort of an extended um, conditional statement. Remember, conditional statements are any statements of the form if something, then something else. Right? You guys remember that from geometry? Yeah. Actually, it was two years ago. Yeah, so. Oh. <laughs> well, you guys had a student teacher? Oh, yeah, that's why we yeah. all. Yeah. One girl. Yeah. Oh. Father, Ooh, she taught us groups, Mr. Yes. <laughs> yes. I got out of it that year. What's her name? I hate teaching. Miss Father Gill. Father Gill. Miss Father Gill, yeah. yeah. I don't want to take a reading. Please get out of that. Yeah, you kept trying to build on that, and there was just nothing there. Her, was like, her father, speaking of father, her, her dad was a math professor. Is any kind of like watch classes at one point? Uh, no, I don't think that was her dad. I think that was just a, a different professor from Harvard. But anyway, um, her dad was a math professor, and her mom was like a high school math teacher, and her sister was a math teacher. And she's like, oh, I should be a math teacher. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, but my mom's an anesthesiologist, but don't let me do doctor stuff. <laughs> it's not the same thing. Right. Anyway, um, where am I? Oh, yeah, so, so, um, in this, so we have an if then statement, right? We have if this bunch of stuff, then this other bunch of stuff, right? So the if part of an if then statement is called the hypothesis. And the then part is called the conclusion. So the thing that you just have to be aware of with the intermediate value theorem is that if the hypotheses are satisfied, which is a continuous function, and you pick a y value between the two y values of the endpoints, then this conclusion has to work, okay? Um, let me show you, before I talk about the second type of, or the second special theorem, let me just show you what problems like this look like on Delta Math, because they're a little weird, okay? Um, let me get to that. So let's see. So here's intermediate value theorem. So here's a typical problem. So it says this function, so they're like blocking out part of the function, okay? And it says, this function has a domain from negative nine to positive nine, and it's plotted below such that the portion of the graph on the interval from negative one to five is hidden from view. Given that f of one equals negative two, that's, 
this y value that they're telling you, and f of phi equals seven, that's this y value that they're telling you, determine what conclusions can be drawn based on the intermediate value theorem between negative one and five. Okay, so you just answer the questions that they prompt you to answer. So if you scroll down from there, it says, since the function of f of x is, and they're gonna ask you, is it continuous or is it not continuous? Those are the two choices, right? So if you look at if you look at the explanation, the words up here, it doesn't ever say anywhere that it's continuous. It might be continuous, but it might not be continuous. So you would just say it's not necessarily continuous. We don't know that it's not continuous. We just don't know that it is continuous. So it's not necessarily continuous. And if you look at the hypotheses, it has to be continuous for the intermediate value theorem to work. So in this problem, I would say, since it's not necessarily continuous, the intermediate value theorem cannot be applied, right? Therefore, maybe there does exist an x value, and maybe there doesn't exist an x value that this works for. So you'd say there may not exist. We don't know that there doesn't exist a, a, an x value. Uh, a value of c in the interval from negative 1 to 5, negative 1 to 5, right, because that's the part that's being blocked out, where f of c equals negative 1, right, because if the y values go from negative 2 to 7, definitely negative 1 is in between there, right, but we don't know necessarily that it happens, like, it, maybe what happens in this function is the, um, the function goes like this, and then it stops, and then it picks up here, and continues up to there. Like, it might look like that. It doesn't say that it doesn't look like that. It doesn't say that the function is continuous. So those would be the answers to those questions for this problem. And then I just click Submit Answer, and that's the answer. And, and then you can see, like, what they, what they intended. Like, yeah, it's kind of something like what I described. It doesn't ever cross this vertical line. Okay, if I go to a different problem, here they say the function is continuous. It says right there, it's continuous. So I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna say, since the function is continuous, then the intermediate value theorem does work and be applied. It states that for any value k in the interval from negative five to two, right? Negative five to two, because that's the part that's being blocked out. There exists a value c, where c is between negative 5 and 2, such that f of c equals k. Whoops, I messed up. Yeah, no, the okay. k is actually the y values. Sorry, f of c equals k. c is an x value, and k is a y value. So it should be the, um, the y values have to be between this y value right here, which is negative 2. Four, five, six, negative six, and this y value here, which is three. Does everyone see the mistake I made? Yeah. K, if you look at just this expression, K is a y value, C is an x value. So the Ks range from negative six to three, that's this y value to this y value, and the x's go from negative five to two. No, no, remember when you have interval notation, the smaller number I always right, okay. on the left. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I scroll down. There must exist a value of C in the interval from negative 5 to 2, where what well, must there exist a value of C in the interval from negative 5 to 2, where F of C equals negative 5. And you'd say, yeah, because right here, this y value is negative 6, right? So, yes, that's true. There exists a value of C where F of C equals negative 5. Boom. Done. And then they draw a little picture and they say, see, it is true. It definitely does cross that blue line. Okay? There's no way they could draw it in a continuous manner and have it not cross that blue line. It's impossible. Does everyone understand how that works? All right. So, for those questions, that's all you have to do is just answer the prompts. Like they'll, they'll prompt you these questions. And you're looking for the word specifically for the word continuous in the in the description of the problem. If that word continuous is not there, then you you can't 
say anything about the interview that I was doing at this point. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the second special theorem that I want to talk about. It's called the extreme value theorem. Extreme value theorem. So the extreme value theorem states that if f of x is continuous, On, oops, on the closed interval, which again means uh, endpoints are included from A to B. So if f of x is continuous on AB, then f of x has a, an absolute minimum. And an absolute maximum. Between uh, X equals A and X equals B. Okay? Now, just one little technicality here. When you talk about an absolute minimum or an absolute maximum of a function, you're talking about y values, like the highest and the lowest that it goes. It has to attain its highest point, and it has to attain its lowest point. So if I draw this situation, again, like say I have a continuous function between A and B, maybe it looks like this this time, and here's A right here, and here's B right here. So if I just look at that little stretch of function, A to B, goes like this. I mean, I can definitely see there's a max and a min. There's a, a max right there. That's the highest that this point goes, where this little curve goes in that interval. And there's a min, like, right here. This would be like the min. It attains both of them. Okay. And you might be like, well, doesn't that work all the time? And not necessarily, not if it's not continuous. Like, for example, if the function has an asymptote, well, let's just look at some different scenarios. What if f of x isn't continuous? Okay. Well, let's just think about the different types of discontinuities. What if there's an asymptote? Well, if there's an asymptote, then it might not attain its maximum end. Like, you might have a function that's, um, say this is A, maybe that function looks like this. This is A. And this is B. There's no max, right? This function has no maximum. It doesn't attain its maximum. It just keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. If the asymptote happened to go the other way, then it might not have a minimum. If it was like one of each, it wouldn't have either, right? So if there's an asymptote, then the extreme value theorem fails to work, right? Other types of discontinuities, what if there's a hole in the function? Well, maybe there's a maximum and a minimum, and maybe there's not, because maybe the hole will occur at the high spot or at the low spot. Maybe the function goes like this. It starts here, and it goes like this, and then it's like, oh, not there. Something like that. This function has a minimum right there, but again, no max, right? Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Maybe the hole just occurs somewhere randomly in the middle, but the extreme value theorem guarantees that it works. So this doesn't work here. There's no max here. Max. This one happens to have a min. 
Okay, so say this hole has coordinates um, like 5, 8, or something like that, okay? What are you telling me the maximum value of this function is? Like, let's have a conversation. Like, you, you would say, well, what about 7.999? And I'd say, well, that's not true because 7.9999 is on there also. You know what I mean? I could always go a little bit higher than any number that you're going to give me that's close to 8. You see what I mean? So it doesn't ever attain its maximum. It gets really, really close to it, but it doesn't ever reach it. See the difference? Okay. It's a good question. And then the third situation is what if the function contains a jump? And it's the same idea. Like maybe the jump makes it so that um, there's a discontinuity or there's a um, missing point or something like that. Maybe there's a jump where the function goes like this. Okay, in this function, there's a piecewise function like this, there's no minimum. And it's the same exact idea, right? This one has no min. The max right here. But there's no man. Okay? And then people always ask about, well, what about the situation where you just have a continuous function, but it's just a horizontal line? Something like that. Okay? So if I have a horizontal line like this, then if this is a piece of the line, like for example, suppose this is a piece of the line y equals 2, then the maximum value this graph achieves is 2. It achieves it. What's the minimum that this achieves? Two. It achieves it. So in this case, the max and min are both two. And it, yes, the function gets there. So this is like a weird, trivial example that's a little confusing at first. But when you think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, the max is two. The min is two. It's not an interesting situation at all. OK? So in this case, the max equals the min, which is certainly possible. I mean. Like if I'm if I'm at a job and I make a hundred dollars every day, and somebody said, "What's the maximum amount of money you made in any one day?" Hundred dollars. What's the minimum amount of money you made in any one day? That's hundred dollars also. You know what I mean? So it's that same sort of like constant situation. Okay. Does everybody understand? But the key hypothesis to each of these special theorems is that the function has to be continuous. If it's not continuous. You can come up with counterexamples where it doesn't work. Okay? So the intermediate value theorem says that you can't get from here to here without hitting every value in between, every y value in between. And the extreme value theorem just says that if you have a continuous function, it has a max and a min at all times. Okay? All right, so that's all I have for today. The homework tonight then is on delta math, it's just called the intermediate value theorem. And I'm actually, the reason why the notes were a little long today is I actually gave you the notes for Monday as well. We were going to talk about the extreme value theorem for Monday. So I'm not going to be here on Monday. So um, on Monday, just bring your Chromebook and there'll be another assignment that deals with the extreme value theorem. Okay? Any questions? Okay, sure. Uh, let me stop recording real quick. Yeah, sure. Tell me when. No, Sarah. All right, let me stop recording and I'll be right there. Oh, you